Happy share my screen with you guys. All right, so can you guys see the PowerPoint on your screen now? Anybody, please let me know. Omar or anyone? Yes, sir. All right, so let's do it. Okay, as far as our the uh, like lectures are concerned, this is basically its lecture. So in today's class, we will be talking about uh, different ethical theories. Uh, that what are different types of ethical theories, and then we will discuss all of them one by one. And after that, we will talk about uh, self-realization or self-actualization. Uh, we will discuss that. What do we mean by self-actualization? Uh, how self-actualization can be achieved? And what are the benefits of, uh, of having self-actualization or self-realization? So these are the things that we will be talking about. Let's start with the types of ethical theories. So basically, there are four types of ethical theories. The first one is golden mean ethics. Second is utilitarianism. Third is right-based ethical theory. And fourth is duty-based ethical theory. So these are four types. Now discuss all of them. Uh, let's discuss all of them one by one. So the first one is golden mean uh, ethical theory. And this theory was proposed by Aristotle. And according to this theory, the solution to a problem is found by analyzing and analyzing the reason and the law. A mean value of solution, which will be between the extremes of excess and deficiency. So basically, uh, as the name of the theory suggests, this theory is advocate of uh, mean value or balance between uh, a balanced solution is with concrete, so it has a lot of advantage. But on the other side, the binding material, cement that we use in concrete, when we uh, produce cement, it generates a lot of carbon dioxide. So it is negatively affecting the environment. Uh, so this product has its advantages and as well as its disadvantages. So what should we do? Should we completely ban the production of cement uh, and uh, live a life which is not, which won't be very comfortable? Uh, or should we let the environment deteriorate and uh, just keep on using, using this material? So according to the golden mean theory, we need to find out an intermediate path, a moderate path in between that we keep on using the cement, but we uh, we need to uh, adopt a twofold strategy. One strategy is we try to find out ways in which we can uh, minimize the, uh, the pollution because of cement generation, right? We need to modify our industry or manufacturing process. And the other way is uh, to reduce the demand of cement. We need to find some alternative uh, materials that can be used uh, in concrete as a replacement of cement so that the demand and generation of the cement or and the production of cement is you know, decreased to a certain extent. So this approach is a, is a main approach and that's what a particular word and use uh, this is you need to follow an intermediate path. right or left, that will cause problems. Okay, so this was one example. And another example is a comparison of a bookworm and a non-serious student. Now here I want your feedback. What do you guys think? Which approach is better? Being a bookworm or being a non-serious student? What what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, both these cases. Hafiz Talha, Talha Nasir, are you there? Talha? Uh, 
the house is not there. Hafsa Shahzadi. Hafsa, are you there? Hafsa is not there. Hassan. Hassan Subhan. Okay, I'm I'm noting down the students who are actually not there. Maksud. Maksud Baja. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, Maksud. So, uh, how would you compare this being a bookworm and being a non-serious student? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Ek bookworm hone ke kya disadvantages ya advantages hai? So, you can't learn skills. We can't learn skills. What do you mean by skills? Uh, like he's always reading books, but not considering what is ha happening in the actual world and how to face okay. problems in the real world. In the real world. OK. Um, Maksud. Maksud used the term of skills. So one thing that just came into my mind. Uh, broadly, these skills are classified into two skills. One is uh, hard skills and the other is soft skills. Uh, for example, as an engineer, um, uh, the topics that we cover related to, let's say, building design or bridge design or dam design, or footing design, uh, related to any beam design or uh, concrete technology or fluid mechanics. All this is hard knowledge, like hardcore knowledge of civil engineering. So the skill that we develop is our hard skill or the technical skill. And on the other side, we have soft skills. Soft skills are more like uh, communication skill, leadership skill, teamwork, okay, uh, or your uh, dressing code. So these things are soft skills. If, uh, as Maksud pointed out, that the students who are bookworms, who are just into books all the time, uh, now on one side, they might be able to get good marks, like excellent percentage or GPA, but on the other side, they lack in the life skills, real, real life skills, when how to face hardships, how to work together with people, how to communicate our point effectively, how to lead any team. So all these skills are related to the real life uh, soft skills. Uh, and if you are just in uh, into books all the time, then you lack on these skills. So we need to uh, develop both the skills in our academic life and then later on in our professional life as well. So that's the disadvantage of being a bookworm that you don't develop any soft skills. Uh, Maksud, what about the non-serious students? How would you comment on them? Maksud is leaving. Danish, Danish Aslam. Danish? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, Danish, you are here. So, Danish, Maksud told us about the bookworms. What about the non serious students? What, what are the advantages or disadvantages? Uh, disadvantages, so both are yeah, non serious students. Okay, okay, okay. Sal ke taat. Mean case are less marks. Less marks are okay. Skills will be developing because he is not interested in anything. Can develop new thing? Skills. Okay, skills develop new thing. All right. Jo hard skill, the technical skills that would develop new thing. All right. Yeah. And somebody in another class said that, that most of the time who, who's, uh, the students who appear to be non serious in uh, in their classes or in their yeah, like hardcore technical knowledge uh, they are non serious because they have interest in some other uh, in some other topic or in some other profession and then they develop those skills so uh, like there was one perspective that the students who sometimes appear to be non serious in uh, in one particular uh, course or in one particular uh, field, they might develop good skills in in some different skills uh, in some different areas. And sometimes they 
they also develop good soft skills they are better in their communication or in their uh, networking uh, so uh, the point i wanted to make was that according to golden mean theory both these extremes are not desirable if you are a bookworm you will lack a lot of uh, skills that you need in your real practical life on the other side if you are a non serious student you will lack a lot of hardcore technical skills that you need if you want to practice your uh, your profession so we need to have a balance we need to have the definitely we need to have sound technical knowledge but on the other side we need to develop soft skills as well if we are like really non serious in in everything that we won't be able to develop any of the skills so according to golden mean theory uh, follow a mean path next example is of a miser on an extravagant so miser is a person who uh, who is uh, who really does money uh, neither on his personal needs nor on his family's need like not on anything he just wants to save money so that is one extreme on the other side extravagant is a person who is very careless in his spending he does not have any financial management or any financial plan he does not know how much he is earning and how much is he spending uh, and a person who uh, who is extravagant he uh, he gets into uh, into trouble in terms of his finances uh, often so these are the two extreme but according to golden mean theory we need to have a balanced path we need to make a budget we need to um, uh, we need to keep track of our earnings and our spendings and we need to manage our finances uh, so uh, these were a few examples related to uh, the application of golden mean ethics now let's move on next theory is utilitarianism now the theory of utilitarianism was proposed by jeremy bentham and john stuart mill uh, according to this theory the happiness or pleasure of a greatest number of people uh, in the society is considered as the greatest good so only consequences matter so uh, if we, the, 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 these four theory that theories that we are discussing here these these are not the only theories there are several other theories of um, of ethics and then those theories are divided into groups and this utilitarian theory belongs to consequential uh, group of theories so according to this theory only consequences matter the action by itself does not matter uh, the action which creates greatest happiness among greatest number of people is the right action or the moral action or the ethical action and it does not like you do, you do not see the action by itself okay so uh, even like if lying can create a lot of happiness and do good for a lot of people then according to utilitarianism Uh, lying is fine you you can tell a lie if it creates uh, greatest good among large number of people so it totally depends upon the consequences and an action is morally right if it consequences its consequences lead to happiness of people and wrong if it leads to uh, their unhappiness okay an example of utilitarianism Uh, an example of this can be the removal of reservation system in education and government jobs which are uh, really benefit uh, which can really benefit the talented but this can have an impact on the rights of minorities now here i want your opinion on this uh, do you guys know what is reservation system aur hum hamare yahan kya term use hoti hai iske liye commonly can anybody tell me anybody kamil the quota system ah quota system that's very right so ye jo hamare yahan jo term local se use hoti hai quota system that is basically reservation system so uh, kamil ye jo quota system hai what do you think is it a good system or a bad system ye hona chahiye hai nahi hona chahiye sir as you said ki aap uh, agar aap bad student hai to it is good but phir uh, wo minority ke rights mare jayenge बट ऑन दी अदर हैंड सर हम अपने मतलब रोल देखते हैं और डिसीजन में सर कि कुछ ऐसे मतलब के कुछ बच्चे डिजर्विंग नहीं भी होते 
तो वो अपने के कहते हैं फिर इंस्पेक्ट्रल सीट पे आ जाते हैं फिर दिस एंड दैट एंड सब फिर जिसमें दूसरे टैलेंट का भी हक मर जाता है तो सर आई डोंट थिंक मतलब मतलब दैट गुड सिस्टम अकॉर्डिंग टू मी ओके इन योर ओपिनियन कोटा सिस्टम इज नॉट अ वेरी गुड सिस्टम इज देयर एनीबॉडी इन क्लास हु सपोर्ट्स द सिस्टम बिकॉज़ एवरी सिस्टम हैज इट्स एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस एक डिसएडवांटेज हमें कहां मिलने वाला है क्लास में कोई और लोग ऐसे हैं वो वो सपोर्ट द सिस्टम दैट द सिस्टम इज इज राइट ओके आई सी वन हैंड रेज्ड नासिर जी नासिर सो व्हाट वुड यू से सर दिस सिस्टम हेल्प uh those people who are living in backward areas they don't have opportunities in their uh, area all right to so, sir wo quota system pe jo hai wo dusre shaharon mein apply karte hain unko wahan seat mil jati hai mm-hmm. okay okay that, that's the point of view uh, uh, that those people have who support this system so this system has as uh, student said has advantages as well as disadvantages disadvantages that uh, a lot of talented people who are living in uh, urban areas uh, who have higher merit uh, they do not get chance uh, in good educational institutions because of this quota system because people from far off areas or from certain communities they come to the university or they get admitted to the university even if their merit is low on the other side the people who live in the far off areas they have the point of view that they do not have equal opportunities of education in their areas so if they will never be able to secure admissions in bigger universities of the country so uh, that's why they demand that there should be this quota system or reservation system uh, so that they also get the opportunity to study in Uh, uh in good institutes of of our country so uh so i think both the people have have certain um uh, weight in their in their argument but uh, according to utilitarianism uh, uh the practice of the government must have done this kind of analysis that whether having the quota system is good or not having the quota system is better so i think on that basis this we still system in place uh, so this, this is anyways uh, one example of utilitarianism that you uh, see that this is right based right based so thing that right based ethics ethical theory says that the rights of every person should be uh, should be ensured like everybody has the right to live everybody has the right to have uh, good health or liberty or possessing certain things so all these rights must be maintained and any action that results uh, in protection of the rights of an individual uh, that is a good action or moral action and on the other side if any action results in breaching the rights of an individual that action is an immoral action so that's what right based ethical theory is that any action will be you know, judged on the basis of its consequences on the rights of an individual of a society that's it no matter what are the consequences okay so uh, an action done by a person that would prevent a fellow human being living a good and happy life is considered as immoral or unnatural so if you are doing something that is yeah you know, breaching somebody else's right uh, and that can be any kind of right like the right of having a healthy life or a happy life or possessing certain thing if your action is breaching that right it is immoral or wrong action but this theory has a limitation and what that limitation is it does not provide a hierarchy of rights so uh, uh, if you analyze uh, 
some of the situations keenly you will see that uh, there are certain rights which let's say i exercise that might result in a breach of your rights okay so uh, the limitation of this theory is that it does not define that which right is superior to the other right okay in some extreme cases it might but in general cases it does not define that so whenever this there we have a conflict then uh, uh, like this theory cannot resolve that conflict if the rights are conflicting with each other and one of the examples of uh, of this situation where the rights conflict with each other uh, let's say a person is racist we don't have much problem here in pakistan but abroad we have this racism issue uh, is very significant so let's say a person is racist and by a racist i mean a person who discriminates on the basis of race like black white brown yellow right these are the uh, common races so if a person discriminates on the basis of race that person is a racist now everybody has a basic right of having an opinion all of us have this right or every human being has a right to have an opinion about everything or anything no matter that opinion is right or wrong it may be like absurd but whatever it is our right to have an opinion okay uh, so a racist might say that this is my right to have an opinion i let's say there is a white person and he says i do not like black person and this is my right now the second right another right that uh, that white person has is the expression the freedom of expression that is also uh, a human right and it is like uh, internationally recognized that everybody has freedom of expression so if you uh, a racist says that i have the right to have an opinion and further i have the right to express my opinion freely and independently and if he does that then on the other side let's say he is uh, commenting on some black person then uh, black person has the right of not being discriminated but when the white person is exercising his right of having an opinion and uh, expressing that opinion freely and independently when the white person exercises these two of his rights then the right of black person Uh, the right of not being discriminated that right is violated so now you can see that one person is exercising his rights and as a result the rights of the other persons are being breached so in this situation right based ethical theory does not provide us a solution because it does not define the hierarchy of rights that which right is uh, is above the other right okay so this was one example of right based ethical theory let's move on so the last theory ethical theory is duty based ethical theory and this duty based ethical theory was proposed by emmanuel kant and according to this theory every person has a duty to follow which is accepted universally with no uh, exceptions so all of us have certain duties to perform like it is our duty to speak the truth it is our duty to work honestly it is our duty to be nice it is our duty to uh, uh, to work like uh, to deliver the best for whatever we are paid for right uh, for example if i am teacher it is my duty to uh, at least try to do my best if you are your student it is your duty to uh, to give your best in order to learn uh, the things okay so according to duty based ethical theory all of us we need to perform our duties and uh, regardless of the consequences like for example it is our duty to speak the truth regardless of the consequences even if speaking the truth result in uh, in in some problem in some conflict even in a war whatever we are supposed to speak the truth because this is our duty so this evaluates the actions on the basis of Uh, uh, of the duty if something we need to do and we are supposed to do that then we must do that and regardless of the consequences so an example of this can be expecting all of us to be honest kind generous and peaceful etc so every person is evaluated 
uh, or every action is evaluated in a way that whether uh, that action is uh, is as a result of somebody is performing his duty. If that's the case, that action is moral. If that's not the case, then that action is immoral. So these were uh, the four theories uh, about ethics, golden mean ethical theory, uh, then utilitarianism, right based ethics and duty based ethics. Uh, with this, our discussion about the, con uh, the ethical theories is concluded. Anybody having any question about this? Or you, you want to comment on anything or you agree or disagree with any, uh, any of the theories or you want, like, you want to comment on anything? Excuse me, sir. Ji, please go ahead. Sir, first theory that you explained, it was my net issue, so I didn't reply. आप उसके बारे में दोबारा बता सकते हैं? अच्छा मुझे याद नहीं कि मैंने उस क्या बात की थी और uh, आपने मेरी लास्ट क्या बात सुनी थी? सर सेकंड थ्योरी से स्टार्ट किया था। फर्स्ट क्या बात है? ओके चलें फर्स्ट का मैं आपको ब्रीफली बता देता हूँ वैसे आई गिव यू द रिकॉर्डिंग्स एस वेल और ये आपके पास पावर पॉइंट भी होगी बट � uh, we need to uh, follow a mean path. Whatever solution, whatever problem we are facing, we need to identify multiple solutions of that problem, and then we should adopt a mean path. Uh, you, you won't take any of the extremes. If uh, and then we discussed uh, a few examples that uh, industrialization has made our life convenient. But on the other side, it has negatively affected the environment. So what should we do? Should we completely ban industrialization or should we uh, let the environment deteriorate? So the according to golden mean theory, we need to find out an intermediate path. We need to see that how we can modify our manufacturing processes, how we can uh, modify our industry in such a way that it creates less uh, pollution. And on the other side, the products that, for example, cement, uh, is a product that uh, whose generation uh, results in a lot of carbon dioxide uh, uh, generation. So uh, we need to find some alternative alternate materials and we need to uh, uh, may not be fully but partially. So uh, according to golden mean theory, the, the first theory, we need, always need to find out an intermediate path so that um, the, uh, the affairs of our life can carry on and on the other side, we do, do not negatively affect um, the environment or the society. Okay, and then we after that we saw a couple of more examples, but that's what golden mean theory was. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Any other question, guys? OK, so if you don't have, don't have any question at this point, then after golden mean theory, uh, oh sorry, after our discussion about the theories, now we will start our discussion about self-realization or self-actualization. Uh, what do you guys think or what comes to your mind when you hear this term self-realization or self-actualization? What does it mean? We use a term in Urdu. What does it term and what does it mean? Can anybody comment on this? What do we mean by self Zameer? realization? Um, Zameer, nee, Zameer is different. Zameer fark chiza. Any other idea? Sir, self realization is knowing one's strength and weaknesses and accepted them. Self realization is knowing one's uh, strengths and weaknesses and then accepting it. Uh, that is correct. That is a major part of self-realization. That's true. Achha, Urdu mein mein se se kya kate? I'm just curious. Kya aap I think it's a common word. It's not common. Bhi nahi, lekin I guess class mein kisi ko to pata hoga. Self-realization. Somebody muted his or her mic. 
Oh, uh, unmuted. Anybody? Khud at sabi. Khud at sabi. Khud at sabi is again a part of self realization. Uh, I think the more uh, like accurate word for uh, self realization is khud shanasi. Apne aap ko pehchan na aur Urdu mein iska jo ek bilkul precise word hai wo hai khud shanasi. Ehtisabi khud ehtisabi ka matlab ye hai ki you Uh, you evaluate yourself. आप अपना एहतसाब करते हैं जो आपने गलत और सही किया है उसको क्लीनली आप एनालाइज करते हैं दैट कैन बी कंसिडर्ड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन और दैट्स नॉट द टोटल द होल थिंग इज सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन और खुद शनासी नाउ एज समी सजेस्टेड बिफोर दैट सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन मीन्स नोइंग वंस स्ट्रेंथ्स एंड वीकनेसेस एंड एक्सेप्टिंग इट so uh, both these parts like knowing our strengths and weaknesses and third is and second is like accepting it both these parts are important components of uh, self realization there are other components as well and there are ways in which we can achieve self realization and then there are advantages of self realization so we'll talk about several points related to uh, to this topic so let's dive into it self realization so self realization is the ability of someone to reach his or her full potential it can be seen as the ability to achieve everything that you are capable of without even knowing it so self realization is basically knowing yourself in a uh, uh, in a great depth that you know all the aspects of your uh, your being you know your strengths you know your weaknesses uh you carefully analyze your life like you analyze your uh, your mistakes that you have done in the past you accept those mistakes and you uh, learn to live with those uh, uh, with those mistakes that you have committed or with the shortcomings of your personality and then you carefully plan your life uh, and you ask yourself what do you actually want uh, in your life like for example a lot of us are on a track uh, that we did not define for ourselves like i know uh, like uh, i think we have talked about this before as well or if with not you guys with some other uh, class that how many people in the class have actually joined civil engineering by choice who were actually aware that what civil engineering is what kind of subjects you will be studying what kinds of skills you will be developing and what kind of yeah activities you will be doing in your professional life how much money you will be making uh, what are different uh, career paths that you might have after uh, graduating uh, from civil engineering department ut lahore so uh, like how many of you actually considered all these points and then made a choice and uh, joined civil engineering department okay i don't know if we did this before but we can have a uh, this one minute activity right now like uh, those of you who who made uh, educated decision of joining civil engineering department please raise your hand let's see how many of you uh, made that decision uh, after uh, after studying different options so we have 29 people in the class right now uh, okay one hand is raised all right let's wait for a few seconds so those of you who uh, who made an educated decision of joining civil engineering i want you guys to raise your hand all right so you can see that uh, out of 29 students who are present in class only one student uh, tuba made a uh, Uh, decision an educated decision of joining this department okay thank you tuba you can slow your hand now so you see that most of us especially in our part of the world do not uh, like uh, we don't make educated decisions because lack of information or lack of knowledge uh, about different options available so uh, 
what self realization is that self realization means uh, you you make educated decisions like this is another aspect of self realization this is not the total self realization that you uh, you uh, you explore yourself you study yourself you know your strengths you know your weaknesses and then you decide that what uh, path would be the best for you like some of you might have like uh, like for example if somebody is not good in mathematics and he or she knows that then not coming to the engineering is 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 the right decision like if you don't if you are not good at mathematics and you don't like mathematics you don't have to do this you don't have to study engineering and somebody might uh, might have might just, uh, not have like good communication skills or he does not want to interact with people then maybe uh, teaching or public speaking is is not for that person right so these are just just examples so when we know ourselves in depth then we are in a position to make better decisions uh, it's being able to reach heights that you have never believed you could and self realization helps in gaining control over our life i think that is the greatest benefit or greatest food fruit of self realization that once we have uh, fully realized ourselves then we get control of our life if you uh, read literature uh, modern literature on self help or if you watch some videos about self help or psychological issues uh, among people you will find that a lot of people complain about this that they do not have control over their life they are just uh,